Okay, so in part two, we begin configuring multi-area OSPF in Packet Tracer. I'm going to start with our internet service provider router that's out here outside of our organization. So I'll click on the router, go to command line interface, stretch this out, get to global configuration mode, and start by putting in the host name. The ISP router only has one interface, the gigabit 0 slash 0 interface. So we'll put in the IP address. The network is 209.165.200.16 slash 28. I'll make the ISP router the first address in this subnet. So that means 17 will be the first usable host. And now I need to do slash 28, which is 255.255.255.240. I'll put in the command no shut to turn on the interface. And the only other thing I need to do for this router is put in a default route. I'll put in a quad zero default route out of the gigabit zero slash zero interface. Control C to get back to privileged user mode, and I'll save the configuration. All right, I'm done with the ISP router. It's just the single interface that we configured with a default route going back out the gigabit zero slash zero interface. Now it's time to configure the ASBR router. The ASBR, or Autonomous System Boundary Router, has three interfaces the gigabit zero slash zero interface that goes to the ISP, and then two serial interfaces. We'll need to configure all three interfaces and then afterwards configure OSPF. We'll start with the gigabit zero slash zero interface. I'll open up the router, type enable, conf t, host name ASBR, interface gigabit zero slash zero, IP address 209.165.200.18. The other, the ISP is .17, so we're .18. 255.255.255.240. Of course, I could have chosen any IP address in the subnet. I just chose the next available IP address. No shut. I can make sure that my connection is up by doing a do ping 209.165.200.17 and I get a reply. Okay, so now that the gigabit 0 slash 0 interface is up, we'll move on to interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. We'll give it IP address 10.1.1.2. 255.255.255.252 since it's a slash 30. No shut. Interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 IP address 10.2.2.2 with a slash 30 subnet mask. I'll also need to put in a clock rate I'll choose 128,000 and no shut. So now all three interfaces have been configured. The next thing that I'll do, since we are the boundary router and we have the way out of the network towards the ISP, I'll put in a default route, quad zero, also going out of the gigabit zero slash zero interface. So now I've configured all three interfaces, a default route, and now it's time to configure OSPF. So to configure OSPF, I'll get a prompt here. I'll get back to global config mode, my router timed out. I'll type in router OSPF. I need to pick a process ID. I'll choose one. So router OSPF, process ID 1. I'll give the router a router ID number. I'll say router-ID. 
Since there are seven routers in our organization in Packet Tracer, I'll just choose the IP address 7.7.7.7. Once again, I could have chosen any 32-bit dotted decimal address for the router ID. I just chose 7. Now I need to put in my connected networks. Now the connected networks that I want to advertise to the other routers in my system. So of course the connection going out to the ISP is not going to participate in OSPF. The internet service provider router is not part of our autonomous system. So I'll be putting in the 10.1.1 network and the 10.2.2 network. So I'll put in network 10.1.1.0. Since it's a slash 30 subnet mask, 255.255.255.252, the wildcard bits will be the inverse. The inverse of that is 0.0.0.3. The area is area 0. We're in our backbone area. And so that's my first network. And for the second network, it's the same wildcard bits. And the network is 10.2.2.0. So those are both of the networks I'll be advertising to the other OSPF routers. Also, since I have a default route to the ISP, to the internet, I'll put in the command def tab default dash information originate. This will allow me to propagate my default route to the other OSPF routers in my organization. That's all I need to do for the ASBR router. Next, I'll configure the Area Border Router 1, ABR1. So I'll click on ABR1, get to Global Configuration Mode, put in the host name. Let's start by configuring Interface Serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. I'll put in the IP address 10.1.1.1. 255.255.255.252 is the subnet mask. I'll also put in the clock rate of 128,000 and the no shut command. The next interface to configure on area border router 1 is the gigabit 0 slash 1 interface. It's connected to the 192.168.1 network. So I'll make this interface 192.168.1.1. So I'll type in int gigabit 0 slash 1 to get in the gigabit 0 slash 1 interface. IP address 192.168.1.1. A slash 24 subnet mask and a no shut command. Now it's time to configure OSPF. I'll type router OSPF1 for the process ID. I'll give him the router ID 5.5.5.5. And I also have to advertise my connected networks. My connected networks are network 10.1.1. And this time I'll do something different. Another way of configuring OSPF in the Cisco curriculum, instead of putting in the network number, which would be 10.1.1.0, and then having to figure out the wildcard bits, which is the invert of the subnet mask, you can also put in the interface address, which in this case would be 10.1.1.1, and instead of the wildcard bits, the inverse of the subnet mask, I could put in all zeros. This would also work. Now this interface is in area zero. But for the other network, notice that as soon as I begin advertising out of the serial interface, we get an adjacency change and a neighbor relationship is established with the ASBR router. The message loading to full, full meaning full adjacency. So I also need to add the other network, which is coming out of the gigabit 0 slash 1 interface, network 192.168. Dot one dot zero. I'll put in this time the wildcard bits, 0.0.0.255, which is the inverse of 255.255.255.0, .255 .255 .255 .0, 
And this, this is the fun part, this interface, gigabit 0 slash 1, is in area 1. So instead of putting area 0, I'll put in area 1. And we now have multi-area OSPF. To really see multi-area OSPF working, we need to configure router R1 here in order to bring up this network between the two routers. So I will quickly configure router R1. We'll open up router R1, configure the host name, go into the gigabit 0 slash 1 interface, and put in the IP address 192.168.1.2. Now that's up. Next, I'll configure interface gigabit 0 slash 0 with IP address 192.168.2.1 and bring that up for the 2 network. And then if we look at the diagram, you can see that not only do we have this 1 network here off the gigabit 0 slash 1, and the 2 network coming off gigabit 0 slash 0, but I've put in a loopback address. This is a loopback 0 interface. A loopback interface is a null interface. It doesn't really go anywhere, but it can be used for testing purposes and can also be very useful. So what I'm going to do is I'll activate a loopback 0 interface and give it the IP address 192.168.3.1 for the 3 network. So let's do that basically a virtual or fake interface. So I'll put in interface LO0. All right, you can see it automatically comes up. And then I'll put in IP address 3.1. So now we have three interfaces up. Gigabit 0 slash 1, 0 slash 0, and loopback 0. Now the 0 slash 0 interface won't really come up until we configure R2. But in the meantime, let's configure OSPF. So I'll say router OSPF1, router ID 1.1.1.1, and then add in the networks. Network 192.168.1.0, is connected to our gigabit 0 slash 1 interface and this is area 1. We also have the 2 network and the 3 network. Notice that we have an adjacency change we now have an adjacency with ABR1, the area border router. And so we've configured OSPF. So this router, this router, and this router are now all communicating. Let's take a look at our routing tables. If I go into ASBR, type enable, and show IP route, you can see that the router O for OSPF and IA for inter area. The ASBR router has learned about the one network. It's an inter area route, OSPF route, and it's learned about the 192.168.3 network, which is also an OSPF inter area route. If we go to router R1 and do the same thing, show IP route, you can see that router R1 has learned about the 10.1.1.0 network. It's an OSPF inter-area route. And it's learned about the OSPF external 2 route, external type 2 route, a quad zero route, a default route out of the network. So the ASBR router was able to successfully propagate its default route to the other OSPF routers. In the next video, I'll configure R2 
and then we'll configure summary addresses so that the area border routers can successfully advertise area 1 to area 0 but in a summary fashion which will help keep the routing tables small.